and there is a word from the Lord this morning. And if you would, I want you to turn your Bibles with me into the New Testament, the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 9 through 10. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 9 through 10. And if you have that, I want you to stand with me here in the sanctuary. If you don't have your Bible, share with somebody who's near you. And if you're watching me right now on Facebook, YouTube, or our website, JenTillyGreaterHarvest.com, we do invite you to worship and fellowship with us here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at 4121 Alfred Street in the city of New Orleans. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 9 through 10. If you dare say amen. 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 And the scriptures read, it says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately he endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Paul is called by a vision from God to preach the gospel to the people at Macedonia. And my topic for you this morning is simply this, the vision of the house. Amen? Amen. And I want to focus on what, what Paul was talking about here in verse 10, as he gathered his friend Silas who was with him, the Lord called us, he said, to preach the gospel to them. And Paul and Silas were together and God was in the midst. The Bible said that they were called to come over to Macedonia to help the people there. And God gave Paul a mission. But before he gave him that mission, he gave Paul a vision. And the vision of the house is to worship Jesus Christ. The vision of the house is the preaching of the gospel. Every house needs a vision. Amen. 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 Every soul needs a vision. Even your soul, even in your spirit, even in your body, you need a vision. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, said that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which was the comforter that Jesus promised would come after he left, then even your body needs a vision. Amen? It needs the vision of Jesus Christ. And the vision of the house is that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Jesus Christ is the Savior. The vision of the house. A man from Macedonia appeared to Paul and made a simple request. Come over and help us. In my opinion that this man appeared in the vision as a human. But I believe, and it's just my opinion, just my belief, that maybe this man was, a, was a, an angel of the Lord. Because you know a lot of times at night when things appear to us in a dream. But I believe that it was more than just a dream. It was definitely a divine communication from God. God sent this man, to Paul, and said, come and help us. And we all need some help from time to time. Yeah. We all need the gospel preached to us from time to time. Amen? Amen? Divinely designed to bring the vision of salvation to the people of Macedonia. And God has given us the same vision. We all need to have Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen? Yes. We all need to follow the vision that Paul had laid out before the people of Macedonia. We need that same vision here today. Amen? The vision of the house is designed to sanctify. The vision of the house is designed to magnify. The vision of the house is designed to solidify the, us a defense against the wiles of the devil. Because let me tell you something, the devil is on the prowl this morning, amen? 
and the devil is always on the attack. The devil is always on the offensive. But as I told you this morning, I'm here to confirm it to you again. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper because God has given us a vision of salvation, a vision to be saved. The Lord knows we need Jesus and we need Jesus right now. The following Jesus, that's the vision of the house. Somebody's going to come running before you know it's over and say, what must I do to be saved? In other words, what is the right way to go? And it doesn't matter what the devil throws at you every now and then, because in the end, we win. Amen? Amen. Come on and praise God this morning. The vision of the house. Paul assured Silas, he said, you know, we are called to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're all called to do that. Amen? Because if God has done something for you, you ought to be uh, uh, testifying of God's goodness. Amen? Because sometimes when you tell somebody what something, what something has happened to you, when you've gone through something and God has brought you through it, share it with somebody else because that becomes a testimony. Amen? And you are a living testimony. We're all called to be witnesses of Christ. That's part of God's vision. Amen? You know, and I believe I got some folk here today that have been through the fire. That have been through the rain. Yeah. That have been through the storm. And I know that you know that God is on your side. Jesus brought you through it. God won't bring you to what he can't bring you through. And I'm here to tell somebody this morning, I might bend, but I won't break. And you know what? I might be bruised, but I'm not fat. Amen? I've been down, but I'm not out. Somebody that praise God. The Lord kept me. Amen. And I know that I got some witnesses here this morning that can say the thing, the same thing. You know, your test will become your testimony. Amen. And I know we used to sing a song in the church a long time ago that said, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. And I promise him that I am going to serve him until I die because what? I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. God has called you to be that living witness. Amen. And you know, Sister, Sister Myrtle this morning, who's a candidate for baptism, you know, I'm here to tell y'all this morning, she's understanding the will of God. She understands the word of God. That's the reason why she's rededicating her life to God, amen? Because she knows you can never have too much Jesus, amen? And she knows that it's never too late to serve God, amen? She understands the vision of the house. God can help you whether you're dead or alive, amen? amen. Yeah. And I told you that one time in the sermon and I preached before. God can help you whether you are dead or alive. Amen? Because I know somebody who touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. Amen. You know, that's God helping you when you're alive. But God can help you when you're dead because Lazarus in the dead, in, in, in the grave. And Jesus touched him and brought him back to life. So God can help you whether you're dead or alive. But let me tell you something. When you leave this earth, you're going to need Jesus. Amen? Amen. You're going to need God on your side. Amen? You need, you need him standing for you. But let me tell you something and encourage you this morning. If you've been waiting on a blessing, if you've been praying to God, if you've been calling out on the name of Jesus and something hasn't happened to you yet, don't you give up, don't you yes. give in, and don't you give out, amen? Because yes. delay doesn't mean denied. God is an on-time God. And we're talking about a time-sensitive Savior. He may not come when you want him to come, but guess what? He's always on time. Somebody pray to God this morning. <laughs> the vision of the house. Paul had a vision of God working it out for some people. And a vision is a source of drive. Vision is a source of motivation. Vision is a source of direction. And the vision that God gave Paul is a vision of divine connection to God. And you need to be connected to Jesus this morning. You need to be connected to God. The Bible says that in the book of Proverbs 29, 18, it says that where there is no vision, the people perish. Amen? Yeah, but happy is he who keeps the law. Amen. Without the laws of God, people are lost. Without a vision, you're going nowhere fast. You know, where there's no vision, there is no hope. Where there's no vision, there is no direction. Where there is no vision, there is no spiritual growth. Paul and Silas was all about winning souls for Christ, and so are we. Amen? That's the reason why we preach the word. And the Bible lets us know that we are to preach God's word. Because we might be born in sin, but guess what? You can be born again. And that's when you give your life to Jesus. Amen? Come on and praise God this morning. Jesus Christ himself. He said, all power is given to me in the heavens and in the earth. 
So wherever you are, Christ is all you need. He sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding on your behalf, interceding for you. He's looking out for you. It is good to have an intercessor somewhere. Amen? As a matter of fact, Jesus said, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things what I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And I'm here to tell you this morning, you don't want to leave this earth without knowing Jesus for yes. yourself. Amen? Amen? No, 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 no. Jesus said it. I believe it, and that settles it for me. Amen? Amen. Because I'm telling you, there are a lot of people, you know, who are testing God. There's a lot of people who are even testing their own selves, amen? There's a lot of people who don't believe in God. There's a lot of people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, amen? You know, you think you created yourself, you did amen? And if you're going through something, before you know it, you're going to need Jesus in this life, amen? And you're going to need Jesus when you leave. Yes. Because when you leave, when you close your eyes, when you're done on this earth, it's not over. Then you will face salvation. Then you will see what salvation is all about. But like I told you last week, there's a lot of people who are dying to be sorry. Amen? But I'd rather be saved than to be sorry. Amen? Amen. I, I don't want to take a chance without having Jesus in my life. Amen? And I don't want you to take a chance without having Jesus in your life. Amen? Because it's better to be saved than to be sorry. Amen? Yeah. Because I know we can all take a stab at it. We can all take a guess at it. You know, I got a lot of people this world. I don't know because I, I, I can't see it. And if I don't see it, I can't believe it. But let me tell you, season, see it isn't always believing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, you can't see the wind, but you know it's blowing. Yes. That's right. Amen? That's right. Yeah. So Paul saw a vision from God, and he zeroed in on the work. You know? And the work for us is to zero in on the word of God. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, believe on me through their word. And there's nothing more powerful than the word of God. Amen? But the devil will try to steer you away from that. You know, and the word of God is something that's going to last forever all throughout eternity. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall last forever. Amen. Amen. So I don't want to leave this, this earth. I don't want to close my eyes, you know, guessing, hoping. I want to leave with confidence and knowing that Jesus is my salvation. Amen. Jesus is my, is yes. my Savior. Amen. That's the vision of this house. That's the vision that we need to follow. That's the vision we need to have buried in our soul, buried in our heart, buried in our spirit. Amen. And then follow that vision because the vision of the house will one day become a reality for any and everybody who gives their life to Jesus. Amen. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. <laughs> Your vision of the house is to understand this one thing. Forget those things which are behind and reach forth toward the things which are before. Press toward the mark of the pride of the high calling of God which is in Jesus Christ. Somebody praise God this morning. That is the word of God. That's the vision of the house. The vision of the house should demonstrate purpose, you know. Noah built the ark and it was purposed by faith. When we think about Abraham, who God called to step out on faith and move toward the promised land. He stepped out on faith and he moved toward the promised land, purposed by faith. Job served God in the midst of adversity, in the midst of everything he had to deal with. He kept trusting in God. He kept believing in God. And there were people who were coming around him and talking to him. When Job was going through everything he went through, he lost everything. He got sick. You know, he lost all his livestock, he lost his entire family, but he never let go of the vision of the house. And what was that? To serve God, to trust God, to believe in God, to lean on God. Amen? And as Job went through everything, and let me tell you something, when you start going through something, they got some folk who come around talking to you and try to talk you right out of the situation you're in. Amen? What we call naysayers. Amen? You know, if you're going through something, you got a bad time in your life, they got folk who come talk to you. You know, well, I don't know why you believe in God if you're still going through all those troubles. I don't know why you still believe in God if you still got some bad things happening in your life. But Job said, he told his wife, he said, because she told, his own wife told him. She said, you ought to just curse God and die. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she told him. And he told, you, you're a foolish woman. He said, because I'm going to trust in God, because I'm going to believe in God. But you know, his friends, he had like three friends that came around him talking to him. Well, man, you must have done something wrong. You know, that, that, that people will do that to you all the time. When they find out you're going through something, you're having a difficult time, it's something you did. Yes. 
Everything bad hap that happened to you is not your fault. Amen? Sometimes it is, sometimes it ain't. Amen? And sometimes it's the devil just trying to see if he can draw you away from God. Amen? Because that's nothing more. Because the devil will take you out there left field and leave you there. Yeah. But wherever God takes you, God will sustain you. Wherever God takes you, God will be right there with you. Amen? But even when you're going through trouble, even when you're going through difficulties, God will be there with you. If God puts you in a storm, God will be in that storm with you. Amen? You know, the, the, the three Hebrew boys, because they were, they, were, they were so faithful to God. They prayed all the time. They believed in God. And they were got folk who were around them that was jealous of that. As a matter of fact, the king condemned them to death. And what the king did was, he said, you know what? Since they don't want to worship this false god that I have built, this golden idol that I have put up, he said, I want them thrown into the fiery furnace. I want them burned alive. But you know what they did? They went into the fiery furnace. Amen. And the king said, stoke it up higher than it's ever been. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, those who try to put them in there, burn some of themselves up themselves. Try to put them into the fiery furnace. But those three Hebrew boys that were thrown into that fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were thrown into that fiery furnace, and they still were trusting God. They were still believing in God. Amen. And you know why I'm telling you that? Because in the midst of the fire, God was right in there with them, amen? Because the Bible said that they were in that fire. Now, it says that this was a miracle of the, of, of the Lord God. But the Bible says when the king looked in the fire, we know we put three in there, but guess what? I see four. Because he saw four. The fourth one looked like the Son of God. And the Son of God can only be Jesus Christ to save him. And we talk about something that happened into the Old Testament. But we know we come to know that sometimes the things that are hidden in the Old will be revealed in the New Testament because we find out that Jesus is the on-time Savior. Before the world, before the foundation of the world, Jesus existed with God. Amen? Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and what? The Word was God. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. That's the vision of the house. Somebody ought to praise God. Amen? Because in the midst of adversity, I'm here to tell somebody, you are perfect by faith. Amen? You got to keep your faith. Because the Bible tells us that all things we go through must be purposed by faith. Because the Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. You got to have faith. You got to trust in God. Amen. Now look, you got friends. You got people you know that are dragging you through the mud and you still have faith in them. Amen. Yeah. So you might as well have some faith in somebody who can save you from everything. Amen. Because no matter what you're going through, I know a God who one of these days before it's all said and done will give you double for your trouble. Amen. Yes. And I'm talking about the Lord God in heaven. Yes. Amen. The vision of any house has got to be purposed by faith. Amen. Paul received a vision to go to Macedonia. And the passion of the proposal was purposed by faith. He kept the faith in God in spite of the things that he went through. Paul was the one who said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Therefore, the devil can't damper, the devil can't diminish, and the devil can't dampen or darken your faith in God, your vision, and he can't take away the vision that God has set forth for you. And God has laid it out. All you got to do is follow the vision. And one of these days, the vision you follow from God will become your reality. That God is, God, is, is all you need in your life. You got to keep on looking to the hill from which cometh your help because all your help comes from God. Somebody praise God this morning for the vision of the yeah, there was a cry. There was a cry of help for God's people that was coming from Macedonia. And then I can say, you know, we're going through that today. There's a cry of help coming from God's people today. Somebody here is crying out for God. Amen. Somebody needs Jesus in their life this morning. I've got several phone calls this morning from people who are crying out for help. Pastor, say a prayer for me this morning. You know, I've got to have surgery. i got to go through some rehab. Pastor, pray for me this morning. i got a serious health challenge this morning. And then you know what? I, I cried out to God for help. And this is the vision that God has given me. God will deliver. God will heal. God will save. God will save. Come on, pray. I believe it. And I know it. God's going to show up and God's going to show up this morning. Amen. 
death. It doesn't matter whether you're going through sickness, confusion, you're going through financial difficulties, you lost a loved one along the way, and you don't know which way to turn. I'm here to tell you this morning, the vision of the house is turn to Jesus. Amen? Turn to the Lord God. Amen? Trust God this morning. Jesus Christ is a vision for your salvation. And our mission is to win souls wherever we are, wherever we can. The Bible says where two or three assemble themselves, I will be a God in the midst. Amen? So even if you're staying in the hospital right now and your body is racked with pain, you're laying there and you feel like you're lonely, all you got to do is cry out to the Lord God this morning. Cry out to Jesus this morning. He will hear you cry. And not only will he hear you cry, Cry. He will answer your cry. He will listen to your prayer. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will give you all the strength you need. Somebody pray God. Yes, Lord. Jesus Christ is our vision for salvation. And our mission is just to follow what God has laid out before us. Amen. The vision helps us to see a choice for eternity. Because I'm telling you, when you leave this place, when you leave this place, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. Yes. Amen. So I want you to spend eternity with God. Amen. They got another place you can go, but I don't want you to go there. Amen. I want you to follow the vision of the house. Spend your time in, 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 in fellowship. Spend your time worshiping the Lord God this morning. The vision helps us to see things God way. The vision helps us to see a choice for eternity. The vision helps us to clearly see what's at stake. Heaven or hell, the choice is yours. God is not going to put anybody in hell. Amen? Amen. God is not going to put anybody in hell. I can't put you in hell. I can't put you in heaven. I can only tell you what the vision is. Amen? And all you have to do is follow the vision of the house. And the vision of the house, as God has laid out, is the preaching of the gospel. Amen. And when you preach the word of God to God's people, it's up to them to hear it. It's up for them to believe it. It's up for them to follow it. I don't know about you, but I decided that I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. I decided I'm going to give my life to Jesus this morning. I decided a long time ago, it doesn't matter what I have to go through. doesn't matter how long it takes. I will keep my eyes upon the prize. And I know that God is able. God did it for me. God will do it for you. Amen. And God will do it all over and over and over again. Amen. And I'm here to tell somebody God is not finished blessing you. If God did it before, I'm telling you, he'll do it again. Amen. God is not finished with you. Somebody praise God this morning. Oh, y'all, we're going to see this, y'all. We're going to get out of here because I'm here to tell you this morning that the vision of the house is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know, if there was ever a time for you to change your life and get right with God, the time for you to do that is right now. Jesus spoke of the urgency of the moment when he said, it's four months and then the harvest come. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look towards the field because they are white. And I'm here to tell you that when the fields are white, that means that it's already past the harvest time. But the Bible tells us that, that, that the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. All you got to do is follow the vision of God's house. And I'm here to tell somebody this morning that the vision of the house is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The vision of the house is to serve God. The vision of the house is to worship God. The vision of the house is to praise God. The vision of the house is to follow Jesus. And I'm here to tell you this morning, if you can't follow that vision that God has laid out for you to follow Jesus Christ, then you need to choose yourself this day who you will follow. I'm here to tell you, he choose you this day. Will it be the God of the Father that was served on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites, and who land we now dwell in? But as for me and my house, oh, I wish I had some witness to get this As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But I'm telling you this morning, we will serve God because we follow the vision. The vision of the house is to fight the good fight. The vision of the house is to finish the course. The vision of the house is to keep the faith. The vision of the house is a vision of love. It's a vision of peace. It's a vision of joy. It's a vision of healing. The vision of comfort. A vision of salvation. The vision of the house is to serve God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God.
God has laid it out. So I tell you this morning, I charge you with the word of God. I charge you therefore before God that the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing at his kingdom. The Bible says, preach the word. Yes. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, in all long suffering. For the time will come when they will not endure the sound doctrine, but they will run after their own lusts and heap upon themselves their own teachers, having itchy ears, hearing what they want to hear, but not the word of God. And they shall turn their ears from the truth and turn to old fables and wives' tales. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible says that you should watch, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, follow God's word, make full proof of the ministry. And the ministry is to follow the vision of the house, which is the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believing that Christ lived, Christ died, and Christ is coming back again. Somebody praise God this morning. Spirit of the Lord is in this place. So I'm asking you right now, right where you are. Now, if you're watching me right now on Facebook, YouTube, or our website, that's time. It's time for us to pray to God and thank God. Every eye is closed, every head is bowed. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we call upon your holy name. We give you honor, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we thank you for your love. We thank you for what you have done, and we thank you for what you have yet to do in our life, God. We trust you in all things, Father. And I pray that you would touch every single soul that hear my voice right now, God. No matter whether they're hearing me electronically somehow, God, or they're right here in the sanctuary. But if they hear my voice, I pray that you will hear their cry. I pray that you will send Jesus in the power of your Holy Spirit into their lives, into their minds, into their bodies, into their spirit, Father. And I pray that you will bring about a healing, touching them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, Father. Heal them, Father. And I pray that you will bring peace, love, and deliverance into their lives. And I pray not only that you will bless them, but you will bless the family that they represent, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. God is good.